Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat bizarre discovery about a tree that most of us are probably not familiar with that turns out to be super special. And special because of the unusual evolutionary technique that this tree seems to use to protect itself against its somewhat hostile neighbors. And the technique in this case involves lightning. So basically here we're going to be discussing a tree that found a way to use lightning in order to become extremely successful in the location where it resides. And so let's talk about this new study and the discovery in more detail, but first I guess let's start with the obvious. When it comes to lightning, today most of us don't actually have to worry about it at all. And mostly because pretty much everything around us now contains various precautionary measures that prevent lightning from striking an actual person. But naturally, because there are so many lightning strikes on Earth, and so many of them end up striking the planet, in various natural locations such as forests, lightning usually strikes something, something alive, with the most common target being trees. Here's actually what happens to a typical tree when it's struck by lightning. And that's because trees are frequent conductors of lightning due to a high water content, but because sap itself is a poor conductor, it usually produces huge electrical resistance when the lightning strikes, thus creating a lot of heat, causing the tree to explode. But sometimes, some trees survive. Here's one from Toronto. As a matter of fact, scientists studying trees have long known that some trees seem to survive lightning strikes with just occasional damage on top. And actually, lightning doesn't just strike a tree and kills it, it can also dramatically increase the chance for a typical forest fire, thus destroying a lot of other trees around it. And so in one of the recent studies, researchers were actually doing studies on effects of climate change, and specifically they wanted to find out how the warming of the planet will potentially increase the lightning strikes in certain tropical regions in order to figure out what long-term effects this might have on most of the tropical forests in South America. In other words, they were trying to understand how resilient certain ecosystems would be if they are suddenly faced with dramatically increased number of lightning strikes compared to previous years. And the main focus was on studying the forest structure and the overall species composition. But in order to essentially study the lightning strikes, they actually did something really clever. They basically used a bunch of antenna to triangulate the exact lightning strike locations that could then be used to assess the damage and to make additional predictions about the change to the ecosphere. And because in a typical tropical forest, lightning actually does way more damage than in any other forest and normally causes tree mortality, especially to the largest and some of the oldest trees, by trying to quantify all of these effects, they were also trying to figure out if this is actually going to affect the carbon sink or the role of trees in storing carbon or affect biodiversity as well. And so in essence, they were actually trying to study how forests might change if there's suddenly a lot more lightning. But what they ended up discovering was completely unexpected. You can learn the exact details in the study right here by Ivan Gora and his team. But in essence, in approximately 10 years worth of data, with a lot of this data actually showing quite a lot of dead trees, there seemed to be one bizarre exception. Of all of the large trees they've studied, one seemed to basically never die. And it didn't just not die, in many cases it thrived afterwards and basically occupied the surrounding area, essentially becoming the dominant species. And so here with the additional custom build system using field sensors and cameras, and by thoroughly studying 100 lightning events in one of the Panama's natural forests, the researchers discovered something super strange. The tree that doesn't actually look strange or special at all. The tree referred to as Dipteryx oleifera, or more commonly known as the Tonka bean tree. And well, I guess let me briefly talk about the tree first before we discuss what they discovered. Now first of all, this seems to be only native to northern South America. It's found in Colombia and Ecuador, and also in some parts of Central America such as Costa Rica, Panama, Nicaragua, and Honduras. And it's also a really large tree. It can be up to 55 meters or 180 feet in height, naturally making it a typical target for a lightning strike in a typical rainforest. And it's also known for producing one of these. These are tonka beans. Now these are not exactly the same as typical tonka beans that you can actually buy online. This is from a slightly different species. But in essence, these are usually almond flavored seeds that are edible and can be bought at different local markets, with similar beans even used to produce various prescription drugs. It seems to be a natural anticoagulant. And because it also produces beautiful flowers, some locations, like Madeleine, Colombia, also use this tree as a kind of a natural city decoration. These are basically street trees. And though this is not a strange tree by itself, 
it seems to be pretty common, at least one species seems to have evolved a really bizarre defense mechanism. Now here when it comes to defense, all of these trees contain coumarin. This is a defense chemical that can actually be toxic to many different animals and is also technically toxic to humans in large amounts. But this is the first time researchers discovered a defense mechanism that's actually entirely based on physical properties. Because apparently, when this tree gets struck by lightning, not only does it not die, it seems to directly benefit from lightning because it's able to divert a lot of this lightning to pretty much everything near it. And though it does receive minor damage, as you can see in this picture, in most cases, it's really everything else around the tree, and specifically various parasitic vines that seem to be affected the most and essentially end up dying. Moreover, because this is usually the largest and the thickest tree in most of the surrounding areas, it's also way more likely to be hit by lightning. So basically here this tree seems to encourage lightning strikes because it uses these lightning strikes to its own benefit. And though in this study all of the other trees never survived, Dipteryx oleifera consistently showed absolutely no damage. Or maybe some damage, but it was not enough to affect the tree at all. Moreover, when they looked at the older data, they also discovered that over approximately 40 year period, there was a definitive and very high hazard of basically being anything living next to this tree. Now this obviously does not concern animal life, but for any other plant, this tree was a huge hazard. Any plant, any vine, or even a small shrub growing next to this tree was a lot more likely to be struck by lightning and basically be destroyed. Whereas in other locations, it was basically the opposite. A large tree would usually take most of the damage, and if the forest fire did not start, most other plants around the tree would survive and thrive. And this was not some small damage. Each of these lightning strikes managed to destroy approximately 2.4 tons of nearby trees and the vast majority of parasitic vines essentially vines that use the tree for their own benefit, implying that this is indeed a very strange evolutionary adaptation and explaining why these trees, despite their size, seem to be so extremely common. And the adaptation itself seems to just come from the way this tree is structured. Here this seems to be just the physical structure itself. First of all, it provides high internal conductivity, so basically lightning in this case flows through most of the tree without building up a lot of heat, and so the sap in this tree is just a little bit different. And second of all, it's quite possible that even the root structure here disperses the lightning to everything near the tree as opposed to the tree itself. And because these trees usually grow really old, hundreds of years old, on average most of them get struck by lightning at least five times. So this is not something that's uncommon and seems to be part of the tree life and something that it evolved to survive. Moreover, the researchers in the study even estimate that after a single lightning strike, this tree suddenly gets approximately 14 time increase in successful seed reproduction just because everything around it is no longer an issue. So essentially, after every lightning strike, these trees seem to prosper with their seedlings expanding and conquering areas nearby. Which by itself is a really cool discovery, but obviously leaves us with a lot of questions. One major question being, how come this is the first tree we've actually found so far, and how many other trees are able to do the same? Because chances are this is just one of many trees out there that evolved this very bizarre technique. And naturally, since this is so successful, and because lightning strikes in tropical areas are very common, there's an extremely high chance this is a super common adaptation. But at least for now, there seems to be the only known example, and the example that was proven to be super successful. So assuming that the lightning strikes in this particular region increase over time, we can also assume that trees like this will probably take over and become much more successful, with trees that are not adapted to lightning strikes eventually decreasing over time and maybe even going extinct. And so a super intriguing discovery, and a discovery that nobody expected. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about unusual discoveries in biology in some of the future videos, and you can find some more in the description below. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.